please note, most responses are heard upon review and not in real time. Changes in the video's filter visually mark the replies that were the most significant. Those various audio responses have been enhanced, repeated, and sometimes slowed down. As always, we do not offer this video as irrefutable evidence of the paranormal, nor do we claim our annotations are 100% conclusive. All we're asking is that you please approach the data presented here with a curious mind, and that you wear damn headphones. Once you relax your expectations and let go of all the ghost junk cluttered in your brain, you might be surprised at what you receive, record, and document. In spite of our meat suits we're currently donning, the energy behind consciousness is all the same, right? It's that same sentience between flesh and spirit, correct? Possibly? Regardless of layers of time and reality, Who's to say how far we can reach with our own thoughts, grasping into the present, future, and the past? That's why I believe that any of our captures are probably already contaminated. But there's still beauty in that. There's something beautiful in immersing yourself in history. In unfolding the past, we learn to what lessons it may give in the present. There's reaffirmation in knowing where we came from and the struggles that we endured. It makes us belong. It adds to our credibility. And the locations that still stand are testaments to our fortitude as a species. They are tactile labs for us to let our wonder explode. And the soil on which they sit does not rest. That's the library that holds mysteries that we should all check out. Mysteries we imprint ourselves onto, enriching the layers of moments for future investigations. That's the majesty of Ashmore States. It erupts out of an ocean of corn as a petrified monument to a country that was still in its infancy, fumbling to make all the pieces in the puzzle of society fit. A monastery for researchers who happily gaze into the unknowable abyss and stare and beseech and listen, regardless of a response. I'm ashamed, I mean truly embarrassed on how long it took me to visit this location given how close I live, but after visiting once, I definitely will go back. Here are the highlights from Paraholics.com's September investigation of Ashmore States with Mike Caldwell and Lindsay Heideman and myself, Matthew Jackson. We began our night with a fantastic tour from Ashley. Ashmore Estates. Um, we started off as a poor farm. Um, during the poor farm days, anybody could be here from a widow and her kids who couldn't afford their farm, orphan children who lost their parents, murderers, rapists, drug addicts, alcoholics, everything. Anybody the county did not want was sent here. At that time, they were actually called in. Um, like I said before, it was about a 300 acre working farm, 26 to 30 buildings at one time. Um, right now, we have about three acres. I wish that house was still here. There's some more banners up on the third floor too that show you a lot of the history. Cool. <laughs> there are lights that I can plug in, but I know most people do not want them on, so I normally don't turn them on. And we're actually moving. So we're gonna go into what would have been the women's dining room at first. So during the poor farm, this would have been the women and children's dining room, because back then, women and children and men would have been separated. Even if it was your father, you would have been separated from him. Wow. You could, you know, be outside with him and that kind of thing, but when you were eating, sleeping, you would have been separated from him. Um, so the room that is down here would have been um, like where the kitchen, the sinks and all that, where they did the dishes. This right here was the kitchen. So it was a cafeteria style. That's why the windows are like they are. Um, the room that's and there would have been a storage room. Um, when Robin bought it, there was plaster up here. We took it down, we actually found these windows. These are original to the 1916 building. So these are original windows. When we took down the wall, we found Matilda. We named her Matilda. Oh. 
I don't know if the haunted house somehow that was here before Robin bought it put her there or somehow she got there. We're not sure, but we have named her. I it looks like my niece. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> well, she's got her father's hair. <laughs> That's oh, that's so creepy. creepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this would have been the men's dining room. And the reason for that is the boiler room is right here. And they would have been the ones to take care of the boiler. Um, there are two spirits in this area that we know of. One is nice, one's not so nice. Um, so if you know, be careful when you're going down the stairs to the boiler room. He likes to push us down the stairs. Exactly. Have you ever been yeah, pushed? Stairs, you? Better. Yes, I have been. Okay. Uh, people have been touched down here. We've had, I mean, whispers, shadows, um, mag lights are good in here, REM pods are good in here, um, pretty much everything. Um, so there's two Joe, spirits. yes, Joe was here during the port farm. He was a mentally disabled man who was here and they gave him jobs like maintenance work, yard work, basically stuff to make him feel like he had a purpose to be here. Um, his family was, lived close by and he was allowed to go visit them on weekends. Um, one of those times when he was on his way back, he was walking down the railroad track, unfortunately got hit by a train. Oh, he did not die right away though. A passerby found him running back here where he did eventually pass away. Um, he is very big here. He's very big protector. I know we're talking about who it's by. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he's very nice. He's very protective of the place. Um, I think he keeps the other one at bay. Um, the other one, I can't 100% say where he came from or who he is. I just know from a couple of people that I trust very wholeheartedly. Of course, like your mediums have told me stuff about him. And then stuff that we have got like through the spirit box um, and different questions with like the rip pod. Think he was in an accident somewhere. Not sure if it was a car accident, farm accident, um, and he wandered over here to the building and he's been here a couple of years. Um, what, what was Joe's last name? Blossom. Blossom. He yeah, is okay. actually, so when we go upstairs, I'll show you the graveyard. His grave is actually on the banner we have upstairs. I think I've, I've seen a picture. He's actually buried in the Ashmore yeah. Cemetery. Yeah, okay. So is this the stairway that we were going to push down? This one, right? Yep. The, this is the boiler so room. So this right? is yeah. the boiler room. Okay. And then back there would have been like the maintenance room where there were probably tools and stuff like that. Um, so that would have been like Joe's area. Um, we've had pretty much everything, voices, um, shadows, um, brim pot action. We're going to go upstairs. It's a little room down here that's under the stairs. It's basically like a square room with a mud floor. Um, we think that was probably like a, like a cold storage because um, it's basically underground. Um, I do know somebody who has caught a picture of a child standing right here. Um, like a shadow, but you can, I mean, you can make it out. It literally, I mean, it looks just like a little kid. Um, so I know some people like to do like EVP sessions down there. So that's okay. Hello, girl. Hello. Girls. Oh, girls. So this was Mary and Margaret's room. They were a pair of sisters who were here during the poor farm. They are actually the only ones who had their own private room and private bathroom. So that right there would have been their bathroom. Um, the toys are in there because they love them. They like to be read to. Those blocks have been knocked over. Um, like if you stack them up in a single tower, they'll knock them over. Mary and Margaret. Yes. And I will show you a picture of them when we go upstairs. Yeah. Cool. A lot of stuff that we did have they, found out. Did they like grow up and move away? I'm not sure exactly what happened to them. The problem with this building is it sat empty for 20 years once it shut down. Um, so a lot of the records and stuff that was here was destroyed. So actually, um, a friend of mine named Hannah, who was a previous caretaker here, her and her sister did like extensive history. Mm -hmm. So the stuff we do know, a lot of it has came from them. Um, they've dug and dug and dug. There's three banners upstairs that I'll show you guys that has like a lot of the pictures. The only thing you'll notice there isn't pictures from the inside. They're all from outside. Okay. <laughs> I know Robin has a couple from the inside, but the only area that it shows is like the nursing station. So there's no pictures like from the patient rooms or right. any of that stuff. So, so after the poor farm, around 1955, 58, um, welfare came into play. So we didn't need poor farms anymore. So it turned into a psychiatric hospital. Um, after a psychiatric hospital is a nursing home and developmentally disabled home, so like um, 
autism, Down syndrome, that kind of stuff. These would have been the size of the room like you're in the poor farm. If you can imagine six to eight people being in here. And there's the oh sack, sack yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of the rooms too, when I say like the ones in here, um, you can see where walls would have been. Um, so the previous owner before Robin had a haunted house in here. Um, and he took down a lot of the walls that were left. Which makes it look a bigger than water. Yes, right. This room over here was the shock therapy room during the psychiatric hospital. The reason we know that is because we do an open house um, once a year and one of them, we had a lady come in who worked here during the psychiatric hospital. And she actually told us that this was the shock therapy room. Wow. Yeah, which we didn't know because before that we thought it was just medicine and restraints. We didn't know that they did any other therapies. So it kind of... That's so amazing. I would rather not know. <laughs> That's amazing though when you find somebody yeah. that has direct knowledge. This room is what we call Robin's Nest. Um, Robin kind of decorated it um, kind of what he thought it would look like back in the day um, with old style furniture. Um, that bed has been known to move by itself and it is not light. Um, I have been in the hallway and heard what sounded like a chair and we came in to investigate and the bed was pulled away from the wall. So that's something to listen for too. Mm. And it was weird because even the table that's in front of it was moved with it. graves over there. This was all, all the ones that she could find when um, Julie went over there. Because yeah. um, it's not taken care of. They're overgrown. They're in the ground. So I've, um, I've always heard that if you have a cemetery on you know, your your private property that you cannot deny people from, I don't at least know, in Indiana. I haven't really done research to try to find out. I just know that's what we've been told. And I know yeah. some, I do know some people who went over there and what? have not seen the guy and have managed to find it 
but I just tell people, you know, that's yeah. you're yeah. on your own, right? You, don't if, you know, if you decide you want to go for it, that's on you. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you exactly where it is because I've never been over there. In Indiana, um, at so the, uh, that's the government, <laughs> the old bag plant. You have they have to let you get to it, but they can schedule it and tell you okay, right, where you right, go, but right. you have to go at such and such. Right. So this one right here, this is Elva's grave, so the little girl. Um, this one you can actually go to. She is actually buried in the Ashmore Cemetery. Um, her mom remarried and her stepdad bought her a plot over there and that's why she's buried over there and not in the Ashmore. Um, so Elvis Skinner was about 10 days before her fifth birthday. Um, she woke up one morning, um, was getting ready and her dress caught fire um, and she sustained burns. Um, I believe she lived four to five days and passed away from the injuries of being burned. Um, she's very active, she likes to play. Um, I do, I know a lot of people are like, oh, we gotta do it in the dark. No, no you don't. This building is haunted during the day as well as mm -hmm. the night. Mm -hmm. She likes lights on. So if you have flashlights and that kind of stuff, you might wanna turn them on um, and sit in a hallway. Um, she likes to play with balls, um, all the balls, balloons, that kind of stuff, the toys that are around. Um, she likes to play with them. Is she throughout the whole building? Yes, yeah, she's everywhere. Do, do we know what room or where she? I don't know. Different building one. Yeah, it was okay. not this building, it was the one before this one. Okay, um, gotcha, so gotcha, that gotcha. One, But she's still here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I've heard her on EVPs, I've heard her audibly. Um, I've had her playing with the rim pod. Um, I've had her playing with blue. Hospital bed that's in here. This is actually original to the hospital. So this is the only piece of furniture that we have that's actually original to the building. It vibrate, um, like it's shaking, or they felt somebody sit on it with them. Um, so that might be something you want to. Well, if we if we tell you somewhere. that happened, mm -hmm. it'll be one of those two that'll tell you because you're not doing it. Yeah, I think you'll live to be seventy-five then on that. Hey, you remember when we were at the uh, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital and I yeah. woke up because something was shaking my bed? Oh, yeah. oh shit. I'm fine. That's why we signed a waiver. Oh, yeah. That tricycle does like to move on its own. Um, so that's something to watch out for as well. Um, a lot. And the other thing is, too, a lot of times people will sit in these hallways and if you look long enough down the hallway, you will see shadows walking up and down, going back and forth. Um, the lady... Um, we had a lady on an open house one day who came and told us that she actually lived here. Um, her dad was a superintendent, I think she called him. And she told us that that was his office back there. And this was her bedroom. Um, we, there are two twin beds in here that Robin has put in here because some of the rooms were kind of trying to get them to what we thought maybe they would have looked like. So if you're brave enough and you decide you want to sleep in the building, there are mattresses. If, if uh, Lindsay were to want to sleep in this building, where would be a good room for her to sleep? Um, Mary and Margaret's room is a good one. So people actually do sleep in the building during that. Um, and I've had several people sleep in Mary and Margaret's room and have been touched. Um, I will tell you the spirits don't stay just in the building, wink wink. Right. As in the bunkhouses. Um, last night um, in the middle one, um, a couple of the girls said that they were touched while they were sleeping. Um, the big one, I haven't had anything inside, but I have had where somebody was knocking on the door. Like they were trying to come in and I open it and nobody's there. Mm. So just, nice. yeah. I'm yeah. not opening the door. Yeah, so just, you better shout if yeah. it's you. So, I'm like, it's me, I swear. Well, anytime I've ever slept near Mike, I've always been touched. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game yeah. that I didn't yeah. have yeah. signed up for. Yeah, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I don't as long that as much. Yeah. I just <laughs> yeah. you guys need something, but not that. As long as charges are still pending, it's uh... oh, it's only in the state of Indiana. That's why. Yeah. That's yeah. why you had to come to Illinois. I don't know if our waivers cover sexual, sexual harassment. Well, or anything. It's only in Indiana. Yeah, yeah, we're in Illinois. We're yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah. You're in yeah. Illinois, so you're yeah. pretty much screwed anyway. <laughs> well, that's another story, I guess. <laughs> So that is Ash Four. Do you guys have any questions for me? No, you did an excellent job showing us around. Thank you. Yeah. I've been here once or twice. Okay, so we're here. Mike, Lindsay, Matthew, Ashmore States. We're in the women and children's dining room, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So this is our first EVP session of the night. We each have digital recorders going and an EDI meter. 
on the floor and a trifill meter on the table by the the door. So, Mike, you want to start off the questions? Okay, we like so many of the fours that have come here. We're going to try to contact you. We take it very serious. We'll kid, we'll laugh, but we do take it serious and would love to hear from you. Earlier, we were told of a, a, gen a gentleman who was described as a kindly gentleman named Joe. Is Joe here by any chance? And you've probably heard this more than I've said it, and that is we don't have anything here that's going to hurt you. We do have things that uh, if the situation is right, we're probably going to be able to hear what you say. And as we try to solicit uh, words from you here, remember you can still contact us at any time by making a sound, perhaps by moving something, or touching one of us. Just something to let us know that you're here. There's so much we can learn from you. There might be someone in here that, uh, or perhaps left in a bad mood and stayed in a bad mood, but that doesn't bother us. But we'd still like to talk to you just as well. It doesn't bother us, but we'd still like to talk to you just as well. Talk to you just as well. How about a noise? We may have heard a shuffling sound a while ago, and at the same time we had mentioned Joe's name. Joe, is that you walking about? Is that you walking about? Are men allowed in this room? Are men allowed in this room? Are we violating the rule by being in here? Oh, hello. Blue lights is electromagnetic, right? Yes. Because the top light's a bigger temperature and it okay. fluctuates drastically. If that was an attempt a while ago to make a noise or to move into this room, could you do it again, please? You've got to know now that that light uh, is certainly not going to hurt you. And if you hear it to our left, we're certainly not going to hurt you. It's so hard for us to communicate with you. So we rely on all this, these silly gizmos and gadgets that uh, hopefully you can manipulate to let us know you're here. But we have these things to try to record your voices. We have the those things like on the floor and back there on the table for you to try to interact with just to let us know that your presence is here and that you're trying to reach out to us too so we're trying to find a way to bridge that so we can communicate with one another are you interested in communicating with us thank you if you are who they call Joe. Could you make that light up for us? If you're someone else, light that up for us. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, well, we're going to play back our recorders real quick, and we're going to see if... Uh, Maybe you left us a clue to who you were. And, uh, you know, we're going to be here all night long. So hopefully we get to learn more about you and see if there's anything you need or any way that uh, you can help us or, or we can help you. So uh, we appreciate it. We'll be back with you shortly. If there's anything you need or any way that uh, you can help us or Hello? we can help you.
Did you hear us trying to talk to you? Did you come back to talk to us? Well, behind that box is another device that will squeal. Do you think you can make that squeal for us just so we can validate that you're here? Did you find it on the table? It'll squeal like a pig. Can you come state your name? I need to really listen to this, listen to this, instead of just holding in front of a camera. Right. But I'm afraid to turn anything off, because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> why don't um, you guys just keep doing an EVP session, if you want, and I'll, I'll go and I'm going to listen to this. Yeah. Lindsay and Mike, Women and Children's Cafeteria. Matthew just went to review EVP. If there's somebody down here with us, can you please make that light up in the next couple of seconds so that we know we're talking to somebody and not just the walls? And we'll have plenty of other opportunities and other devices for you to interact with. There was something right behind us. Yep. You heard it as well. Yep. It's almost like you're, you're tiptoeing around. You don't quite know what to make out of us. Once again, I assure you, we mean you no harm. What was that? Uh, I don't know. It'd be nice if he caught something on that. Oh, I feel like he did. Wish I could get my hands on one of those, but not for three thousand dollars. No, no, it's the same with me. If I uh, if I came across one of those, I would use it constantly. Yep. But. It... Oh, hello. Are you having fun playing with that? If you're someone touching that, can you step away for just a second? Thank you. Do you like making that device go off? You can continue to interact with it. I just wanted to make sure that we were talking to somebody. That was interesting, huh? Yeah, yes it was. Well, the um, EDI went off again and it stayed on, and I was like, hey, um, just so that we know it's somebody, if, could you back off of that because it was just on constantly? Right. And then as soon as I said that, it quit. Really? And we also had heard something behind us. Mm -hmm. And where else? Did we hear more than one noise? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. One that we know of for sure. Different things. Let's, let's go regroup. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got a big building and lots right. of places. And mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out. Mm -hmm. Good start, though. Yeah, I can already say, not a bad start at all. No, not at all. Good enough that don't be walking off and leaving me. Right. Well. The hashtag same. <laughs> At the conclusion of this EVP session and my recorder review, I was certain that we had been in contact with a spirit, just seemingly not the spirit of Joe Bloxham. We decided to go upstairs to the second floor to Mary and Margaret's room for more experiments. Unfortunately, this was the session I lost some of my audio on, so the EVP review on these clips are harder to hear. So I apologize, and please keep on your damn headphones. All right, I start to record here. Well, first off, we're in the room of the two ladies that lived here. They're sisters. Sisters, the two sisters. And I don't recall your name. What's your name? Names.
Thanks for letting us in your room. Are we allowed to play with your toys? Name come in and say hi to us? Are you in here? So you light that up. Can you light it up again? Do you have any contact with the, the people downstairs that we were talking with? Appeared to be a gentleman. Or maybe you're not a little kid. Maybe you're tired of people thinking that you're a little kid. Are you actually an adult? Are you women? Can you give us a sign? The response here served as a valuable reminder on how confusing our silly lines of questioning must be to some entities, especially if they're truly 100-year-old ghosts. What was the name of this place when you were here? Joe downstairs. Joe downstairs. Okay, we're gonna play this recorder back and uh, see if you're willing to communicate with us. And if not, we're gonna move on. So we appreciate you for your time. That was interesting. I just don't know what to think. I feel like there was a strong response when you asked about Joe. Yeah. Like, like not happy either. Wow. Well, let's turn on the forever box. Maybe we can hear something. That thump on my ghost box could have come from the speaker, but it certainly felt like something flipped the physical housing of the device as it sat on my lap. Next, we moved up to the third level, where we were told the worst of the worst were kept, which I'm assuming was after the poor farm days during its era as a hospital. We set up the GS2 laser grid system and did an EVP session. Can you come introduce yourself? What was that? Something's breaking the grid. 
Something did set off the display several times during our EVP session. When I came up to the laser unit to review my recorder, that interaction stopped. They told me to stay back. Can't. Wow. What? I even heard that from here. And it's like not. It quit doing it once I walked up here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Say get out. Make your friends wherever we go. Oh. It talks over me. Like that's yeah. the crazy part. <laughs> well, you really pissed them off, Mike. Me? <laughs> <laughs> so you're afraid to come back then? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good, Mike. That didn't seem like the friendliest ghost in town. No. Well, the third floor zero is not really known for that. So who's up here on the third floor? Why do you want us to leave? Why do you want us to leave? Why do you want us to leave? I don't understand why we come to these places and uh, spirits or whatever you think of yourself as seems so territorial. Does it hurt you to communicate with us or does our mere presence trying to interact with you just, is it irritating? Are we disturbing? How does that work? Can you see this building on the inside? Can you see us? Can you see yourself? Are you back? Yeah, we're still here. Are you still here? I'm going to turn on a different device here in a second. Do you think you could uh, communicate through it? Alright, let me turn on the antibox. Certainly. Sure.